Okay, so the, the long and short of it here is, after I said I wasn't going to get into that, if you compound more and more often, my list is kind of a mess up here, but if you compound more and more often, you end up with, like if I keep going with this, it's compounding more and more often. You could think about it compounding continuously. Continuously would be the instant you have some interest, you put it back in the account. Here you wait till halfway through the year to put it back in the account. Here you wait till a quarter of the year and then every month. If you keep going with that, compounding continuously means the instant you have some interest, you put it in the account. Real things in nature, that's how they grow. Bank account interest, even though we've, we've done some problems where we model it with an exponential function, like we would model it with this nice starts here and grows like this. It doesn't actually grow like that, bank account interest. Really, it would be you have your $1,000 and then instantly they pay you the interest and then they instantly pay you the interest again. Really, a bank account grows like this. It suddenly jumps up to a new level every time, right? Even though we're modeling it with that nice blue curve, it isn't that your money steadily grows in the bank. It, it's a thousand dollars for a while, then it jumps up to eleven hundred, and then it jumps up to whatever. Whereas things in nature, populations grow more like this, right? A population of people that starts at a thousand, it isn't that you wait till the end of the year and then, okay, all the new people, you can come in now, and then it jumps up to this value, and then you wait till the end of the next year, okay, all the new people can come in. Populations grow continuously. For populations, it's as though they're being compounded continuously. As soon as there's a new person, they're part of the population. So the blue curve there is more like real, natural, you know, biological uh, and other applications. Uh, population growth, radioactive decay, all those things are kind of real natural, and that's why they call them natural logarithms. So even though in Math 12 often we are going to model things the way we did with this kind of a curve or with with, uh, with what we do in Math 12, it would actually be more accurate to use to think about things growing continuously and using base E. If you take more math courses, you're going to find you use base E all the time. Now, let's actually uh, use this. Here's my disclaimer. or It just says, it says, all it says is, Math 12 students should be familiar with the number E and be able to solve problems in which you've been given an equation involving base E. You do not have to generate your own model equation for continuous growth with base E. So you don't have to write something like that. But if you see it, you have to know how to, how to work with it. As soon as you know that that's a number, then it doesn't matter because even if you don't know about natural logarithms, you can still solve it. You can still find what you're looking for here. The difference here is instead of instead of like if something's growing at 10%, we would have modeled it as 1.10 to the power of t times whatever the starting amount is, 2,000 or something like that. The difference here is it's going to be it's still going to have the 2,000 there, like this starting number, 25, 25 million. I guess I should uh, use the one we we have here, right? It's still going to have that starting number, 25. We'll pretend it was 10%. The only difference is this part is going to be different. Instead of 1.10, this is going to be e to the power of something, and then still that t there. So this part together, e to the 0 0.022, is the same as this rate, basically. They use the letter k for that thing up there. If you look on your calculator, you, if you go e to the power of 0 0.022, it's actually pretty close to 1.022. So it actually is very closely models what we've done before. Okay, try on your calculator. If you if you try that and go e to the power of 0 0.022, it's actually approximately 1.022. So they, it, it's close to the modeling we're doing, but just a slight difference because of that continuous growth thing. But anyways, if you want to solve this, you don't need to know about any of that stuff. All you need to know is 
all the l equation solving you've already had up to this point. So if we're trying to solve this thing, we'll forget this fact here, because you don't have to freak out, even if you don't know this. So you see this equation here, and somebody says, starts at 25 million, assuming the population is growing continuously is why it's being modeled with this base E. And this is T years, and the population is P. We want to know when, wh what will it be 20 years from now? What do we do to solve that if we're given the formula already? How do you solve this? Just make t equal to 20, right? Sub in t equals 20. So you want population is 25 times e to the power of 0 0.022 times 20. If you put that on your calculator, it'll give you the population, which we can do right now. 25 e to the power of 0 0.022 times 20. Make sure you got brackets around that e to the power of thing. 38.82 million, if you want a couple decimal places. In math, we don't do significant figures, right? 38.82 million. Okay, that one you don't even need logarithms to solve, right? What would the question have to be there so that you did need logarithms to solve? Instead of saying, what will the population be, what would a question be where you need logarithms to solve it? What's that? Yeah, to find the years if you're solving for that T, but it's exactly the same. It's just a, you know, an exponent up there that you're going to use logarithms, and we'll do that at the end, right? Here's it's a very similar problem down there. If you do want to use the natural logarithm key, you can you can use it. It's just the inverse, the same as anything else. Um, I'm not even going to insult your intelligence by asking you to push those buttons, right? You can do that for yourself sometime. Although I guess by putting it in here, I already did insult your intelligence, right? Lawn three just means put a three, put lawn of three. I mean, it's it's the it's the natural logarithm of three. I guess actually you could think about it. If if e is uh, 2.718, whatever it is. What is this going to be approximately? What's the natural logarithm of 3? If this is the base, any guesses as to what that's going to be before you put it on the calculator? Just, just like you should be able to tell me what log of 600, you should be able to tell me what it starts with. What's log 600 going to start with? It's going to be something, point, a bunch of stuff, but you should at least be able to tell me this. Log of 600 is going to be, is it going to be 2 point something, 3 point something, 4 point something? How do you know it's going to be 2, log 600 is going to be 2 point something? Yeah, it has, it's, it's in the hundreds, right? Log of, log of 100 is 2, and log of 1000 is 3. So it's between those two numbers. The same thing is true here. Well, log of this number would be 1. Sorry, not log. Natural log of that. So natural log of three, it's going to be one point something. It's it's hard to know because it's hard to know your powers of e, right? It's easy to know your powers of ten, but uh, anyways, <clears throat> you should be able to do these ones. These are more interesting to do because you can do them without a calculator. Natural log of e, ln of e to the something. What is that going to be? That's like log of ten, right? Log of 10 is 1, right? What's ln of e? e is like e to the 1, right? If you like this, you can say those cancel out and you just have 1, right? What's ln of e to the 4th? 4. It's just 4, right? e to the 4th? When you're saying ln of something here, you're saying what power of e is it? ln of 1? That's the same of same as log of one. That's that's that. <clears throat> What's uh, e to the ln thirty-seven? E to the ln thirty-seven is thirty-seven. Now I'm gonna have to stop this before we solve these last two questions here. 
you can. I, I would actually like you to try these two and try it two different ways here. Try solving with base 10. This is just an equation. There's no difference. This is my effort to make you not freak out. And then actually as a last thing, I want you to solve this two different ways if you can and not freak out. Okay? And then we'll look at it together in a few minutes.